good afternoon. I'd like to take you on a journey this afternoon, a journey about my grandmother. This is Julia, Julia Sapero. And I want to tell you about her journey and how she pushed boundaries and how it has impacted generations of her children and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren going forward. Now, Julia was born in Cuba. She was a farmer's daughter. And growing up, and when she became of age, she told her parents that she wanted more out of life. And they told her, Julia, you need to move to the big city. So she moved to Havana, left the farm. And when she left the farm, she did leave with some very good skills. She was an extraordinary seamstress. And the outfit that you see in the picture, she actually made herself. So she went to the big city, and she established clientele, and she sewed outfits for the rich and elite in Havana, Cuba. She met her fiancé, and they began to plan their future and how she was going to contribute to their future. Unfortunately, around the, the, around the early uh, 1920s, the concept of department stores happened in Cuba. Julia lost her clientele. She lost her client base. And she lamented to her then fiancé, what am I to do? I, I want to continue to contribute. So in his infinite wisdom, he says, find something else. And she did. She found her passion in midwifery and went back to school and got her certification to be a midwife. And, very wisely, she marketed herself by using the client list that she had established over the years. So she very quickly, she'd already built the trust with, this, with, uh, with these women, became their midwife. It was during that time when she was a midwife that she recognized that there was one critically important moment when the woman was giving birth and the child was coming into the world. And she found it distressing that the act of giving that child a name was somewhat second thought or just something that, that happened or, or very easy or convenient by giving somebody a name uh, that was uh, a previous ancestor or a common name. And she thought to herself, this is so ordinary. There needs to be more to a child's name. And she, and she shared this with now her husband. And she says, I want to do more when we start having children and naming the child. So he said, give them that gift. And she did. And what she thought of was that there was a world beyond the island that she was on. And she wanted her children to recognize and understand that there was a world beyond where they were born. So as her children were born, she gave them names intentionally and purposefully from different parts from around the world. Names with origins in the Middle East names with origins in Europe, names with origins in Asia. She did this so that they would have a natural curiosity growing up as far as where their names were from. And growing up, those sparked conversations with the children that they were growing up with. The juxtaposition of their first names and last names always sparked curiosity with adults and children alike. Your name is so different. It's not a Carlos. It's not a Juan. It's, it's Zeta. It's Graciela. It's, it's Baldomero. Where are your names from? Now, Julia, being very wise, made sure that they knew the origins of their names so they would have these conversations about where their names came from. And as they grew older and were coming of age, and this is during the, first, uh, during the Second World War, she would have conversations with them, and they would have conversations over dinner 
regarding what was happening in the world. What was happening in the place where your name came from. And that became important to them. And it developed for them a global social conscience that went beyond the confines of the island that they grew up in. It helped to form in them an understanding of the world that was outside of their own world. They became nurses. They became teachers. They became artists, all rooted in the fact, in the knowledge and desire that they, that they were given at birth. Julia gave them the gift of diversity at birth. They were all essentially a diversity of one growing up. But then they were able to make connections with other individuals, and sharing with them where, they, where not only where they were from, but where their name came from. So they understood the value of those global connections just by their first name alone. They were able to address issues of the day, politics, economics, societal changes, technological changes, legal changes, environmental changes, not only on their own island, but around the world. Decades later, I was one of the last grandchildren that she named. Julia had a great sense of history. She named me Fernand, which is French in origin. And she picked that name because I was born on July 14th. For those, those of you who are historians in the audience, you know that that is Bastille Day. So that's why she picked that name for me. So growing up, I had a curiosity about where my first name came from and the history behind that. But I also had this curiosity that was developed by not only her, but from my uncles and my father about the differences of our first names, where they originated from. And we had this curiosity of wanting to know where other people came from and learning about their culture. As a, in grade school, we moved to a neighborhood uh, that was blue collar, and, but it had a rich diversity. But it was my father, from what Julia had taught him, who went to every door within our block to introduce himself, but not only introduce himself and his son, but introduce himself and learn about the others. And I remember those conversations as, the pe as folks opened up the door. First with a little bit of trepidation, to hear somebody different knocking on the door, wanting to introduce himself with their small seven-year-old. And he would introduce himself, and then they would introduce themselves. And the first thing he would say is, oh, your name is Gino. You must be Italian. And then, oh, you're Hans. You from Germany? And that connection right there created such a spark where their reaction was, are you really interested in where I'm from? You want to know about my culture? And then growing up, that was the most amazing social, uh, I don't want to say experiment, but social experience that I had because through those experiences, parents trusted each other. We grew up with each other's children. We spent wonderful times in each other's houses as parents work different shifts. We, we stayed in each other's houses. And I remember having these Thanksgiving meals that were frijoles and pasta and, and, and schnitzel. And you know, yeah, there was a turkey too. But, <laughs> but those experiences, and then it helped us growing up. When we were in school, and inevitably there was somebody who made fun of one of our friends because they were different or what something different to lunch. And we would come to their defense. Well, that's not cool. You don't understand them. Don't make fun of them because they're different. And that brings me back to Julia. One of Julia's wise 
words to us and advice to, to her children and her grandchildren. Remember where your name is from. Remember that your name originated from somewhere. So before you vilify another individual, before you make fun of another individual, before you disparage another individual, think about who you're really disparaging. You're disparaging yourself. You're disparaging the origin of where your name has come from. You're disparaging your uncle, your parents, your family tree. Is that the legacy that you want to leave behind? Those words stuck with me. And then and I went to college and I majored in Spanish and cultural anthropology. And then I obtained my master's in applied anthropology and eventually my master's in human resource development. That whole experience I had growing up, the history of what my grandmother did, inspired me to pursue a career that was rooted in cultural anthropology, which eventually became a career in diversity and inclusion. I recognized that diversity was the method of attracting people within to your circle. Inclusion was the more important element of that, is to make them genuinely feel welcome. And how did that, and how did that happen for me? Well, understanding the origins of where my first name came from, and not just the origins of where my parents were from or where my grandparents were from, but the connection that was intentionally given to me. And that was a sacred gift that I know I need to preserve and help others to understand that and preserve it as well. Thank you.